In this tutorial, we're going to discuss three-point lighting, which is a very classic lighting setup. It uses three lights, a key light, a fill light, and a rim light to define the subject in the scene. So currently right now, I just have one light in my scene. If I do a one frame render of it, I can see what that looks like. This light is positioned to the um, left of the subject at about a 45 degree angle. So this is my top view here. I can see the light. It's about a roughly a 45 degree angle from the subject of my chest piece. And um, it's also slightly above the subject. So it's the light is pointing downwards. And you can see that in my one frame render. However, with just one light, the problem is that there's very dark shading on the side of the model that receives no light. And that might be good in some cases. Like let's say you're trying to create a kind of a film noir look, which has very high contrast lighting, that would be fine potential light. But in many cases, it just isn't as, as strong of a, a lighting setup because part of the object is actually really hidden and we can't, we can't see it very well. So we're going to add another light, which is called the fill light. And that light is simply going to be filling in a little bit of lighting on the side that receives no light. So these shadows are not going to go to pitch black. Instead, they'll go to a lighter tonal value. They'll still be darker than the lit side where the key light is, the main light is, but they're not gonna go completely to pitch black. And what that will do is it'll help to define the shape better. The form will be more visible and it'll give a, a wider range of values to our scene. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I have a one spotlight here and I'll just go ahead and duplicate that. So I'll go to edit and then duplicate. Now I have two spotlights and I will simply move one of them to the other side of the model. Typically, the fill light is gonna be at a, the opposite 45 degree angle to the subject. So I will go ahead and rotate it. So now it's, then it'll be pointing at the subject. And I can position this so it's hitting the other side of my model here. This is currently at the same intensity of my main key light. And the fill light is always at a lesser intensity in order for it to just give a subtle lighting to the shadowed area. So I'm going to go and adjust my intensity. Under my spotlight channel box, I can click on the spotlight shapes item. And under intensity, I can simply lower that. And I'm going to adjust it to about just right about 0.1. Uh, and you can tweak it to different values, but at point one instead of one, so instead of, if it, it was at full intensity, it would be one. If I change this to point one, you'll see now that the light that's coming from this side of the object, is just basically giving a little bit more lighting to the shadowed area so it's not just completely dark. Instead, we can actually see that form a little bit better now. We still see that it's it's a shaded part of the lighting, that the main light is coming from this other side here, but we can still see the form a little bit, which is very helpful for defining the form. And it's also usually more visually appealing. Um, so that's what's called the fill light. And I can pull up a diagram now, which is gonna give you an overview of what that looks like. So in this image here, it shows the basics of three-point lighting. You have your key light, which is usually at a 45 degree angle to the subject. It can be either on the left or the right side. In this image, it's on the left-hand side. And it's usually pointed downwards to illuminate the subject. And then the fill light is what gives a little bit more definition to the shadowed area. So the fill light is at the opposite angle from the subject, still in the front of the subject, but at the opposite angle. And it's, it's at a lesser intensity. Now we're gonna add what's called a backlight or rim light to give a little bit more definition along the back edge of the subject. Okay, so to make my rim light, I'm going to select my fill light and just duplicate that. I'll go to edit, duplicate. So now I have a third light and I can just move that back. And this will be in the back of the model and will be arranged so that it's pointing at the back edge. And here I can just kind of zoom in to see the effect of that. So what this backlight does is it illuminates the rim of the object 
and the back edge and helps to separate it from the background. And it just gives it a little bit more definition to the model as well. Okay, so we can go ahead and do a render of that. So now we can see that we have the main key light, the main source of light coming in from the left side of the screen pointing towards the model. Then we had the fill light, which is pointed in this direction, still in front of the model, illuminating the shaded area, the shadowed area. And then we have a rim light, which is giving a little bit of highlight along this edge as well. So one thing we can also do with these additional lights is turn off the shadows. So we mostly just need a shadow from our key light, the main light source. On my uh, fill light, I don't need any shadows. So I can click on that, go to Shapes, Spotlight, and make sure all my shadows are turned off. So I'll turn depth map shadows off. And then I can do that as well for the backlight or the rim light. I'll select the light, click on the Spotlight Attributes, and turn shadows off. So that's the basics of three-point lighting. You have a key light, which is the main light source, then a fill light, which gives a little bit of lighting to the, the darker area of the model to help define it better, and then a rim light, which helps to illuminate the backside of the model as well. <laughs>